the world's largest island, located between the Atlantic and the Arctic Ocean. In the heart of the winter, navigating this frozen wonderland can be challenging. Snowmobiles are the fastest and easiest way to get from place to place, but for centuries, the Inuit people have relied on traditional dog sleds. As I explore Greenland, I see a land that adapts with the times of a changing climate and evolving transportation, yet remains a place of undeniable beauty and resilience. ice doesn't last all year round. Greenland is a place of vast contrast all throughout the year. In the winter they have very little daylight, temperatures dropping far below zero and Greenland's night sky lit up with the dancing northern lights. Currently we're here in the peak of the summer and there's a big difference in both the landscapes and the wildlife that call this land home. Over the next 10 days we're going to be exploring parts of West Greenland and taking a closer look at what effects global warming is having on the Arctic as well as scouting for unique animals such as the arctic fox, reindeer, musk ox, arctic hare and the humpback whale. We're starting our journey in Alulasat, a small town with incredible history. As we explore this town's day-to-day -day life, I'm captivated by its unique charm and the friendliness of the locals. The people here have a deep connection with the sea as it's a way of life that has sustained them for generations. And just beyond this town's reach lies the infamous Ilulissat Ice Fjord, where we watch icebergs drift silently into the open sea. It's not even two minutes from where we just were on our hike and we've just seen what I believe to be an arctic fox um, so that is already one off the list i definitely want to get closer to it but we've just seen one it was along this boardwalk and it was really curious and we tried to get a bit closer and it, it ran away unfortunately but we will see them again um, this is day one in greenland and we've already seen an arctic fox so i'm super happy all right let's go as we continue our journey closer to the Eki Glacier, I can't help but feel a sense of awe and anticipation for what lies ahead. During our boat ride through the pristine waters, we kept our eyes open for any wildlife to be spotted. As these waters are home to seals, whales and a variety of seabirds, all part of the intricate web of life in this environment. Also known as the Carving Glacier, Eki is famous for its spectacular carving events, where massive ice chunks break off and crash into the ocean. We are around five kilometers away from the Eki Glacier right now, just on the edge of our campsite. And we're going to try and capture some of the big chunks of ice breaking off of the glacier into the ocean. We've been hearing it all night and apparently it's been really active over the last few days. It sounds like thunder and it's pretty crazy to hear when you're sleeping only five kilometers away from the glacier itself. So we're gonna to attempt to capture it right now. I can hear it going off in the background right now and I can see a massive chunk that's just fallen off there. So we're going to attempt to capture it right now. One thing that we've learned is that over the last few years there's been a lot more rainfall rather than snow. Um, and what that's basically doing is the rain is going through the top of the, the glacier and the cracks in the glacier all the way to the bottom level and just sitting there and acting almost like butter. So the glacier is sliding more and the big chunk, the big icebergs are, are cracking off and going into the ocean faster than it would naturally. Um, and that's obviously causing the sea levels to rise. Another animal 
that we really wanted to see whilst we were in Greenland was the Arctic hare. We've just spotted one along the hike. Uh, we've been out for only around 30 minutes in search of Arctic hares. Uh, we are being bitten alive by, uh, by the flies and mosquitoes, as you can see. Um, but he's right in front of us right now. So I'm going to get out the zoom lens and see if we can get some footage of the Arctic hare. Here in the Arctic wilderness, we were fortunate enough to spot a lone Arctic hare. Rising temperatures are altering the natural habitats of animals such as the Arctic hare, with less snow cover and thinner ice making it increasingly challenging for them to find food and evade predators. These animals, however, are adapting to their environment. The hare, for instance, relies on its camouflage and a diet of plants, mosses and berries to survive. Only a moment later, we came across a curious Arctic fox. An equally resourceful animal, the Arctic fox hunts small mammals and birds to feed itself. They also change the colour of their fur with the season so they blend in with their surroundings. White to match the snow in the winter and brown to blend in with the rocks and ground during the summer. As we continue to observe this incredible animal, we're reminded of the delicate balance between nature and the impacts of climate change, a story that's playing out right here in the Arctic. After our thrilling encounter with the Arctic Fox, we continued on our hike to reach the highest vantage point to gaze upon the glacier from above. The Eki Glacier's massive size has been shrinking rapidly due to global warming, shedding light on the urgency of our planet's predicament. As temperatures rise, glaciers like Eki are losing ice, contributing to the global issue of rising sea levels. Our journey led us to the small settlement of Illimanag, where colourful houses dot the rugged coastline. We marvelled at their resourcefulness, witnessing how they use land's natural resources and old age practices that sustain them for generations. Our guide shared incredible insights about the Inuit people who have called this place home and shared stories of the enduring spirit of the people who have thrived here for centuries. And they had lived by very strict rules and uh, kind of if someone had broken a rule in the settlement it would reflect in maybe that the winter was too long and there were no marine mammals and and uh, the couples didn't have children and things like that so the shaman would have to go on a spirit journey and um, the shaman or the angukok he could travel between the worlds the spirit world and and, uh, and this world. We have been fortunate enough to witness some remarkable wildlife here in West Greenland, from Arctic foxes and hares to a variety of seabirds. But the true reasoning behind our adventure was to witness with our own eyes the giants of the Arctic Ocean. Okay, so we have come out on a boat today as it is coming to the very end of our trip. Um, the goal was to see humpback whales up close and unfortunately we haven't been able to see them right in front of us. So out on the boat, hopefully we'll get to capture them right, in, right there, right there, right there. After hours of searching, our patience was rewarded and we were blessed with a sight beyond our imagination, the majestic humpback whale. We even had the privilege of witnessing them feed.